Stick around for five minutes and I'll teach you how to make your own steam engine. This thing is cool. So we are going to learn how to make your own steam engine. Now what you're going to need is a tea light candle like this. You're going to need some copper tubing and I will talk about the diameter for this copper tubing shortly. You're going to need some cork like this. Now this actually comes from a hot pad uh, which is actually pretty thick cork but you can get cork like this from an arts and craft store and the copper tubing by the way you can get from a hobby store so I got this from a hobby store and it came in packs like this where there's about one or two pieces per pack and it wasn't that expensive you'll need a flashlight and of course something to light your candle with. okay so what you want to do is you want to take your flashlight and the reason you've got the flashlight a metal flashlight this or something that's round um, is so that you can wind your copper tubing around it because you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so you want to start down, if you've got a short piece like I have here, you want to start somewhere down to the left so that you end up with a device that looks like this where the dog legs here, one's not longer than the other like mine are. Now you can cut it off if one it ends up being a bit longer, so that's why you want to try and gauge uh, where it's going to be so you have a nice equal length on your heat engine. Okay, so I'm just taking my flashlight here and I'm just winding this copper tubing around like this. And go around. And I can see that if I keep going like that, it's going to be too short on one side. So I'm going to bring this side up a little bit. And now this side, and you can see I'm sort of working it so that I get about an equal length on it. So you can see that looks pretty good. Once I take it off, see, I've got a nice little loop there. And then what you want to do is um, you want to make your dog legs. So you want to basically, don't use a pair of pliers because that'll end up putting a crimp in the copper wire. You just want to turn the ends down with your fingers because copper is pretty easy to bend and you want to do this side in the opposite direction. So something like that and then something like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Um, that looks pretty good just like that. Okay so the next thing you want is you want your cork. Um, so. You can see I've got a piece of cork here. It's about three inches in diameter, and I just used this hot pad and just cut them out with a pair of scissors. But you can see it's thick. And like I said, you can either use this hot pad, something you can get from Kmart, uh, or you can go to an arts and craft store and get actual cork, although it might be a little bit more expensive. So I'm gonna take my loop copper wire now, and I'm gonna thread it through two holes that I've already put in the cork. Make sure that you put the holes in the cork first. Don't poke the holes through the cork, using copper tubing, otherwise bits of cork might get stuck in the ends and you don't want that to happen. So you can just feed one side through here, just feed the other side through there, make sure that they're poking out through the bottom and basically that's about it. Okay then what you're going to need is you're going to need a bowl of water like I have here. So let's just move this over and you want to put your heat engine in the water. Make sure that the feet, the dog legs, are not touching the bottom of the bowl so it's deep enough. And then you want to get your candle and just stick it under the loop like that. So you really want it just a few millimeters, sort of half a centimeter or so away from that loop. Basically, that's it. It's ready to go. Okay, now in order to get this thing kicking along, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to get water in the tube. The way I do that is just basically suck it in and then pop the ends back inside the water and that means that the tubing is going to have some water in it and it's not going to come out again. Okay, so there's actually water inside that tubing now. Then I take my candle 
and I just stick it underneath there like that and then take my lighter and go ahead and light it see what happens and wait for it to start turning Okay, there she goes. Look at that. That is awesome. My own steam engine, how cool is that? It's getting a little bit faster now. Let's see how long it's gonna run for. So yeah, just stop the fast forward there. So you can see that it's still going. It's actually been going for three minutes now. But I'd say it's just about out of gas by the look of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow it out. Okay, so something else that you need to know. This piece of copper tubing is not the same one that I wrapped around the flashlight, okay? This is 3.18 millimeter diameter copper tubing. And that's what you wanna get. The stuff that I wrapped around the flashlight here is actually 2.5 millimeter copper tubing. Now, this will do the job. This will actually cause the heat engine to turn, but nowhere near as good and not for as long. I had to learn that by experience trying a few different diameters of copper tubing. So, the 3.18 millimeter diameter copper tubing works really really well however keep this in mind when I'm trying to wrap this copper tubing around an object it's a lot harder it's easier for it to kink so this is one of my earlier examples you can see it doesn't look really good so when you're wrapping your three millimeter diameter copper tubing or so around an object you're gonna do it pretty gingerly but I would say that's the diameter that you want to go for. That's what you're going to get the best effect in. That thing was spinning for a good three minutes, and I think it might have spun a little longer as well. So that's how to make your own heat engine. I mean, it's totally cool. Now, you can stop it right there if you want to, or if you want to know how it works, then hang on for a few more minutes. So all heat engines work in the same way, and that is using the second law of thermodynamics. One aspect of the second law of thermodynamics is that heat always goes from hot to cold. So for example, in our little heat engine here, when I put water inside this tube and then I heat it up, it turns into steam. And because the bottom end of my heat engine is inside water, well, that's cold. And so what happens is that steam is gonna move from where it's hot to where it's cold. That's the second law or one aspect of the second law of thermodynamics. But here is what's really cool. It's on the way to exiting into the water where the work is done that causes the heat engine to do work. And it's the same for any heat engine. So here's what happens. That steam makes its way through our copper tubing and it comes up and it hits this dog leg right here and right there. When the steam molecules hit the dog leg, that causes the steam to push on that copper tubing in that direction. And on this side, the steam hits this part of the dog leg and causes a force to be, to be pointing in this direction. Well, that causes the object to spin. And there you have your heat engine. And you know what? Every single heat engine works in exactly the same way. That's how steam engines work and it's how the engine in your car basically works. It's an internal combustion engine, but it works on the same principle. Whether it's this or the engine in your car, all heat engines work on that same principle of heat being transferred from where it's hot to where it's cold. And along the way, the molecules push on something producing work. And that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Science for Kids with Dr. C. Look, if you were helped by this video, in any way whatsoever, then go ahead and pound that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell while you are there. Look, and if you want to give,
then please, I'd really appreciate that you'll find a link in the description.